<laughs> it just started randomly before I was even ready. I was trying to get this focused so you guys could see what I'm working on and how I'm doing it exactly. So bear with me as I did not expect to pre press it. And once I take it off and then put it back on, I don't know if that like ruins it. So I'm gonna be working on this piece I sketched out. It's Donald Duck um, fighting over popcorn with these two littles, his favorite people. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, Chip is just like, it's cracking me up. Just as I stare at it, I'm like, oh my gosh. So um, there's a couple things I wanna change, but overall, like this is, this is the idea, right? This is what I'm going for. Um, but I'm gonna be doing this on paper to make it traditional and using marker and paint to work on it. And I just thought, you know what, I'll go live. Um, if you have any questions, the chat box is available. You can rewatch this. Um, but if you ask me any questions when I'm not live, I might not be here to ask it. And I may not see the email come through that I got um, a question on it or anything. So you can DM me. Hi, whoever's tuning in. You can DM me also Critterosity on Instagram. Same name as the way it's spelled on YouTube. So I'm just going to be working on this. And I thought, you know, why hide my process? You know, I want to share with people. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask ask I was just moving things off the side hit the button right as I was putting it on so it was kind of funny okay so here is my process get ready the lights are going to turn out temporarily and I'm gonna make sure I'm all set up and ready I've got my blue pencil um, I just need to get it in frame so I sketch this on my iPad first then once I'm happy with it, I darken my lines so I can see them. And then this turns into basically a light box. The only thing is, is if I'm drawing and my hand hits it, sometimes it closes the picture, sometimes it shrinks it. And just a reminder, you can chat in the chat box if you're signed into your free YouTube account, but I believe you need a Gmail. I could be wrong, don't quote me on that, but that might be the way. Okay, so I turn out my light like so, there we go. And then this creates like a nice luminance and then I can raise the brightness on it, which is really cool. And back in the day, I was drawing on paper and going through paper after paper after paper and realizing like, wait a minute, I can just use my iPad, which once I started telling friends, they were like, I never thought that was the case. So see how I can trace it. Um, it's really neat and creates its own light box. So I'm gonna tilt this. And I'm gonna go quiet for just a second as I start to work on it and figure it all out. Um, sometimes I can see my lines. In daylight, I can usually see my lines, but since it's nighttime here, it's a little hard to see, but that's okay. And I stylized it in a new way that I haven't really drawn before. I'm just lightly putting in my lines. I'm not pushing down really hard on my iPad. Um, I kind of, there's this artist and I wish I could think of his name. I think I have his artwork saved. Um, but there's this guy that used to do Saturday morning, um, comics and it really just started vibing like that style. And I wasn't even trying for it. It wasn't something I was trying to do, but that's sometimes what happens is something will read as similar to like another artist I follow. So I'll zoom in here just so you guys can see a little bit. I think will it zoom am I zooming who knows there we go so there you go see it a little better as I go I think you're seeing it in reverse so I had to redraw this a few times I'll show a little time-lapse um, replay at some point of how I came up with this concept how it started um, it was really rough at the beginning. I mean, I was drawing very loosely. I had an idea in my head. Doesn't always come out on paper the way I would like it. So I kept drawing it and drawing it. And then before I knew it, I got enough to the style that I really liked it. And I really love, hi, Curiously Abigail. Welcome to the show. Hello. Um, I really, really, really love, <laughs> oh, that is a siren. I thought someone was like yelling over me. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, um, I got to a style I liked. I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got thrown off. I got thrown off. But um, sometimes I start things and they just don't turn out the way I like. And I just got done sending all my time-lapse videos from the last like three months. 
I was so behind because I was moving um, and doing the Isle of Magic Marketplace curating that um, I couldn't send all my little videos to my supporters and I was really sad about it. And um, I just got done sending them one and I was like, sometimes you have to scrap idea, more than likely you're going to scrap ideas. So that was happening a lot during those months. I was trying so hard, but I had so much on my mind and um, I basically had to scrap a lot of ideas. So I was really bummed about it. If you're writing anything, I'll get to it, trust me. I just um, have to keep focused on this little, little part right here. Make sure I get it somewhat right. It's a little hard to see through watercolor paper. Um, so I'm trying my best here. Got Dale with his two little teeths. Oh my gosh. I love Chip and Dale. They are just so funny. And I just don't think I really ever thought about it until I started working on them back in November for a reward. And now I'm like in love with them. I just think they're so cute. I always thought they were cute. Okay, let me rephrase that. I always thought they were cute, but I just never realized how fun they were as characters um, until, I until I started drawing them more. Okay, I think I'm liking this. So again, um, thank you so much for, oh, Monty Papa Tai. Um, a throwback feel, but also similar to the new Mickey cartoon. That, that's what I was gonna say. Oh my gosh, Monty, you answered the things that I was trying to say and I'm like, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, it does, it has that, um, new Mickey cartoon style. And that's another thing I'm really digging is the style of that. So um, kind of an old classic comic. I don't know. I just really liking it. So thank you so, so much, Donald Popcorn and a Chipmunk. Yes, it is. Hi. So thank you for saying that because that's exactly how I was feeling. I'm also noticing like, oh, I forgot some little spots here um, at the top. I'm just going to redo those just kind of miss those um, just kind of like not sweat lines you know but like like they're really struggling you know and I love that he's struggling with like Chip and Dale on here that's what cracks me up um, Dennis the Menace see I told you it's got there is an artist and I will find it and I will blast them and be like this is who I felt like it was stylized because it's the guy that used to do the character with I think the glasses at Eggbird or I can't remember their names. It's driving me nuts. And then the other characters, he was like a detective duck type thing. No, I'm not talking about the, the duck movie. Um, Howard, Howard the Duck. I wasn't talking about that. But there was a comic and I follow that artist. He's still around. He's still posting things. And it's very similar. So just a reminder, this is how I use my iPad as a light box. And Maudie, I'm surprised, Maudie, that you haven't used that because... <laughs> Um, you think of everything, I swear. Okay, I'm trying, sorry, I'm sticking my ugly hand right back in the screen. I'm trying to back it up, back it up. Why won't I back up? Okay, I don't know. I don't know. And then I realized I have glitter all over it because glitter was sticking to my hands and then I got it. So as I ink this, I'll be here, I'm showing you. Jeffrey Goldstein, see that sounds, that sounds right. Um, let me, I know, I know, blocking my password, not from you, but from random others. No, it's not like it's exciting. I won't use the code for anything else. Um, let me see. Okay, let me exit. Why? <laughs> like, why are you yelling at me, machine? Okay. So we got Jeffrey Goldstein is what you said. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Why am I spelling it wrong? Jeffrey Gold Goldstein. Um, let's see. Comic? I guess I should write. It was an old school comic. If you if you've got it, okay. So Dilbert. I said Egbert. So mm, and not not that one. It's not that one. Scott Adams did Dilbert. Um. I just love that you're thinking of it. No, it was like these two little characters. Anyway, they had these little eyes and then they were always very wiggly, wonky lines, but yet so beautifully done. So anyway, the point is I got those vibes. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Okay. Sorry. Um, clearly I'm all alone 
and that is okay with me. Uh, but I am going to paint it. I am going to make it, you know, just like a neutral painting. I don't know what I did with my really good. There it is. Zebra pen. Yoink. Okay, so I'm using the small side of this zebra pen. And I'm just going to ink it now. You can zoom in and watch. Oh, you got the wrong one. But it does say he did Dilbert. So you're not crazy. You're not crazy. Okay. There you go. All right, I can move my board, which is nice. So you can kind of see me ink. Oh, I inked. Just kidding. So this isn't gonna stay um, just an ink. You know, this is gonna be a full painting and I'm gonna cover all the line work as well. What are you guys doing tonight? Are you guys creating tonight? And what's great is this customer, as much as I really like, don't like doing Donald because his bill it drives me nuts. Never does what I want, which is why I tried stylizing. Um, and by the way, I only looked at a picture a couple times of Donald for this one. Um, I really wanted it to be my own style. Um, I just, I have the hardest time drawing him. It's really tricky for me. So this person that commissioned it, they're amazing. They love my Donalds and I'm always like, ugh, I don't like it. It's not good. But again, imposter syndrome. I know I keep saying it, but it's truly, truly true. And I want everyone to know you're not alone. We all feel it all the time. Um, it's just not something that goes away. But if my customer loves it and keeps asking for Donald after every time I've drawn for them, then you know what? I guess I'm doing okay. And they're like, I know you don't like doing it. And I was like, hey, if you're okay with me doing that, my own style, my own way, then then so be it. I will continue. Um, I got through a whirlwind day. Would love to create, but I'm out of energy, so I'm enjoying watching you create. Well, thank you so much for staying, taking a little break. I'm you're posting lives today and yesterday and I'm decompressing. I know how that goes. It can be a lot. And that's why I, I do like to take breaks. When they're my own, I'm good like this. It's like mellow for me. But um, yeah, when I'm on, I'm like, whew, it's a lot. It's a lot. My friend went, went live the other day on um, Pop Shop and was like, it was their first show. And they're like, how do you go on for that long and have that energy? And I'm like, I always have this energy. I always, always have it. Okay. So I'm just gonna create that other foot. So he's kind of digging his, his heels in to it. And I, again, wanna have very comic style to this one. Oh my gosh, this, this chip, they're so chunky and cute. Okay. So proud of myself when I get kind of what my brain was seeing. I get so excited for it. Um, I'm so glad you wanted to, <laughs> I'm such a fan of your churros. Oh, you're talking to, oh, you're talking to Abigail. I'm sorry. Here I was like, oh, you're welcome. Wait, what? <laughs> um, and then I have to start on 50 churros. Yeah. I don't know how you crack out so many when it's something like hand sewing and stuff. But I love that Maudie knows exactly who you are, Abigail. It makes me so happy when our community knows one another. Um, but yeah, those churros are just, they're no joke, they're super cute. They're super cute. And they all have their own little personalities. Yeah. Abby, you know I'm a fan, girl. You know it. I've been buying from you for a while now. I'm just having to slow down on my purchasing. Mm, I don't like it because life. Because moving and costs of everything are going up. And I know artists are starting to feel it too. It's like, no, everyone stop buying. Or they're doing experiences. And you're like, no, I want you to experience things, but also me. A little piece of glitter on there. Right, right. I'm speaking it. Oh, you're so welcome to truth be told. Truth be told. Now, Dale was a little harder to fit in this. 
um, just because I'm trying, oh, I drew his body way too far out. That's okay, that's why we cover it up. Um, it was a little tricky because he's behind, you know, he's like pulling on the back, trying to bring him backwards, like, here, hold on, buddy. So it was a little tricky and there's so little. Okay, I'll fix that. All right, so we got their little back lines and I'll have to refer to their coloring again. Just because I draw them once some other time, like I don't remember exactly what they look like. So we got that. Um, let's see, I've got you on my laptop and you've got me Googling Sunday comics, such a nostalgic feeling. Yes, I'm so sad it doesn't show me your whole comment. I'm sorry they were and then it doesn't tell me the rest. Um, I'm running out of room, but yeah, that's costs of things are crazy right now, absolutely. I used to wrap all my gifts in Sunday comics. It's been years. Oh, I love that. I used to do that too. What about the putty? Maddie, I know you used to do the putty where you take the silly putty and push it on the characters and get the ink from the newspaper and then you'd stretch them out, right? Right? Tell me I'm right. It would always muddy the putty. Ha, ah, muddy putty. Um, but yeah, that was always the case. So if this was just an inking, like I, I would really feel good about this. I'd add some, um, you know, some like line work and hatching and stuff, but we're completing this with full paintingness. I might not got, get through it all tonight, but I'm definitely gonna start getting it down. And these guys have their little lines. And then I want to keep the ground simplistic and I'm going to create like a silhouette very short in the background. So they're the main focus. Ernie Bushmiller, Nancy and Sluggo for the comic guy. I'm going to look it up. Ernie. Um, the other thing I was going to say was, yeah, they were, they were like two animals. One looked like, like his shirt was always kind of loose. As soon as I see it, I'll know it. I know exactly what I'm thinking and I can't think of the name. Um, but Ernie Bush Miller's comic strip. See, that one's of a person. Oh gosh, Nancy. Yeah, that was good. That was a good one. Um, I'll just look up Saturday morning cartoons because, or Saturday morning, Sunday, um, morning comic, um, Strip. Was it Sunday morning? It was the paper. Oh, let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Let's take a quick break and look and look and look and see if anything pops out and I'll tell you. Well, first I see this one, Picnic and Cookout comics. Those are kind of a similar vibe, but it's like this little duck thing, almost dog-like. And he, I don't remember if he was a detective or he was just like always in work clothes. Okay, Mallard Fillmore, kind of like Mallard Fillmore. Um, hold on, hold on, I'm looking up a couple more. And I'm starting to see things that look familiar. And like I said, the moment I see it, I'll know. All right, well, I don't see it quickly on a Sunday morning comic. But um, it, it's a famous comic strip. I do remember comic strips. Um, classic. Gosh, I really wish I knew the name. Um, Dean, Dagwood, oh, Dagwood and Blondie. I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh my gosh, I love you so much. Dagwood and Blondie. And Blondie. Oh my gosh, if you got this right, then I don't have to like rock my brain. Oh, no, you're just saying another comic strip. Sorry. I, no, no, it's not it. It's not it. Um, it's not, it's not humans. I know Dean Young. I do know who Dean Young is. And no, that's right. I was like, no, it's not it. Because they're, they're animals in the comic book strip. They're like two creature things. Um, comic strip. Just going to check one more thing just to see if I can find it. <sighs> Classic comic strip. No. 
Uh, but anyway, I follow this artist, comic strip, comic strip, comic strip. Now it'll show me on Instagram the next time I open it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I follow that artist and they pop up from time to time, but again, algorithms. So that's why I'm saying comic strip a lot because I'm hoping it'll just show up as one of the first posts. Like most things do. And then the one time you want it to just like cater to what you searched, you can't find it. Don't see it. Don't see it. Um, but yeah, the hair is giving me the same vibes as stress lines. Yes, yes. But all the vibes of comics, right? Okay, so I have my inking done. I'm not worried about it smearing because that zebra pen dries pretty quick. So I'm gonna come in and sketch out where my backlight is. Stephen Pastis Marmaduke. No, I think I remember Marmaduke. It's so funny because I'm like trying. If Marmaduke is the one with the little puppy where he's kind of got the nose. Oh no, that's the long one. No, not Marmaduke. Oh, I've got, I've got you. You're like gonna sit there and go, okay, Eva, come on, come on, come on, come on. What one is it, Eva? Um, but I just know it looks kind of duck-like and I used to love the style of it. It's funny because I just got rid of a bunch of co old comic book um, type things and I was like, no, now I need it. If ever it comes up, I'll be like, Maudie and Abigail, they were the ones here. They're the ones to know. Pearls before swine. Keep them coming. I'll keep looking. I ain't got nothing better to do. Pearls before. See, that doesn't sound familiar yet at the same time. If I can't think of the name. No, but that's so funny. It's definitely an old classic that used to be in like this, the, the cartoon, the, you know, with Garfield and Annie and all those when we were growing up. And I used to cut them up. The Dagwood one was just, it sounds like something it would have been. Or maybe not. Maybe not. And see, as much as I was say crazy, like, I don't know what they were. They almost don't look like a typical animal. They look like just some random creature that they designed. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. And I was like, let me go to my Instagram really quick. Instagrams. No, and of course, it's not one of the first things to pop up. I was wondering if I had it like in bookmarks because I feel like I've saved their art before, but it would have been like a while ago. Let me see. I have a lot of artwork. Let me see. Um, and I get so excited when I go back through my bookmarks. I'm like, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's like a Pinterest board. Okay, hold on. It wasn't that long ago I started following them. Let's see. Jay? Please be it. Please do something with it so that I know. I think this is another comic illustrator. I don't think he does it. Nope. He just draws other comics, I think. Oh, but he's so good. Oh, what's this one? Ah, ah, oh! <laughs> um, I have no idea what it was called. Um, okay, Pogo and Albert. Pogo and Albert. I don't think this guy works. I don't know. Maybe he did. Jay Fosgett? Marvel, Disney, Boom, the Jim Henson Company. So maybe he did work on them. Oh, look at his fraggles. Look at his fraggles. Okay, J.P. Fosgett. J.P. Fosgett is his name. Um, I'll go back. But yes, like this, oh, the way he draws his sketches, I die. I die. Okay, so there's that one. That's one I'm thinking of, but also there's still another one that looks similar. This guy is amazing. I'm seeing if he had another commission of the other characters I really like. Um, look, look, at, look, at, look at this, look at this. I can't, Walt Kelly. Walt Kelly, let me look that up. I love this, this is why I go live. So we can geek out together, Walt Kelly. Geeking out is my favorite. Okay, so that's the Pogo one. So that's kind of the vibe I'm talking about with the eyes. Do you see that? You kind of get it? 
Um, but it's still not that one I'm thinking of. However, that is one of them. That definitely is the vibe. How cute is Pogo? Oh, my heart. Okay, we got this, Maddie. We got this. <laughs> it is so fun. We got this. Okay, hold on. So there's that one, which we found through that guy. Okay. So then I remember saving it a while ago. Oh, look. Look at that. That's my Don Bluth, My Animated Life. That's his book that's coming out that I was talking about today. So this person, David, some of these are just really good at art and then I like get to it and I'm all, no, this isn't the person. And then I save more photos because I'm like, don't forget this account. I love this account. As I've already saved their picture, I'm like, I need more. Um, hold on, it wasn't that long ago. I started following him and I swear I was like, save this because I want to remember. I have so many line art people that I love, like the Morticia and him. Oh, God. oh, that's Jay again. See? All right, what about this one? Jay again. My goodness, I have, I'm just obsessed. Oh, oh, is this it? Is this it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Say you worked on it a long time ago and they're still remaking it. Oh, this guy's fish is just epic. No. Clearly not. It was just that layout design he did. I thought it was so beautiful. Okay, we've got... Um, I swear, though, we've been really close, and we did find one thing. Who's this? Dave Pimtel. Uh, no, but his his quick sketches are gorgeous. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll try a little bit more and then I'll get back to drawing. I promise, I promise, okay? But we're trying to find what this is driving me nuts. This is like, I gotta find this artist. I'm pretty good about like finding an artist that I'm like, wow, they've been doing this stuff since the 80s. I usually save their work, but I did nerd apparently. That way I can find them in conversations such as this. You may have seen him in such as, such as, such as. Maybe I didn't save his work. Save some of my work. It's killing you. I know. And I'll see it. And I promise you, I'm going to send it to you one day and just be like, this is it. And you have to remember that day. There will be a day and you will remember that day as the day we remembered. <laughs> and the day shall be called the day we remembered. I just, I remember it was during the pandemic I started following him and I thought... But I'll do some research myself because now I won't find it. And now I'm in face painting, which was back when I was still face, face painting, which is way older. But bummer, Bill the Cat. Oh, I know that one, but it's like, what is it? What is it? Bill the Cat. Buddy. No. And I remember him. He was like the, I hate Fridays or whatever. He'd always have a line. No, not him. Because he's a cat. This was more like duck-like in, in, in it all, so. All right, I'm gonna keep letting Maudie keep looking, everybody. Let's let the Maudie look. Maudie, Maudie, Maudie. <laughs> you got this for me, you got this for me. But yeah, it wasn't so obvious, and they were really squiggly. The lines were really, I mean, yes, he's squiggly too. And it had a bill on it. And I know there's a penguin in this one that he was always with. But no, no, no. No. More in the pogo vibe. More in the pogo. Yeah. Dang. Dang. Um. Let's see if I can find it based on, like, duck comic strip. I'm thinking of all the things I could look up to like find it. Nope, that didn't work. That was definitely not it. Um, classic comic strips. I'm looking at classic comic strips because I feel like that is where I'm going to find this particular one. There are so many comic strips. You realize this? So many comic strips. There's a lot. I want this to be a piece that when she frames it, like the characters really pop on it. Like I want them to be a lot of the page 
um, versus a whole big background. And I'll have like a little bit of trees flopped in there and the corners coming down, but overall just the character design. Mutts. I'm also like we're getting like the names again. You keep giving it to me. Nope. Oh my gosh, you're so cute though. Not it, but so cute. But yes, similar vibe. Patrick McDonald Mutts. That is darling. Oh, so down to earth and it's a worm. <laughs> Oh, that is so cute. So cute. I love that you're not only dropping the like comics, but also the names of the creators. And yes, I'm going to drag some of these lines, like reactivate the ink a bit because the alcohol in this pen does that. It starts to blend and pull it, but it will all be covered with the paint, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to cover the majority of the background. Mooch and ear. Oh, they're so cute. Mooch and ear. Or Mooch and Earl. I said Mooch and ear. Mooch and Earl. They are so darling, all this like fan art of it too. So many people love it apparently. All right, I'm looking up Donald Duck so I can reference some colors. So don't mind me, Donald Duck, this is what I do, just so I can get color schemes going. Um, I'm gonna grab my other set of paints. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna go with this blue. He's got the little line on his sleeves, so I'm gonna leave a little line. Um, the hat we have blue. So I'm just the darker it is, the less work. Thank you so much, Jazz. The less work I have to do um, when it comes to painting because I already have that dark tone set down that I do like a lighter blue and it'll pop that color. Um, so we have a little hat. Okay, we've got the sleeve with the yellow. Thank you so much for stopping by tonight and checking it out. Just getting my commissions done so I can start new commissions next, uh, well, kind of next week. I'm going to take commission orders, but then I won't be able to start them till just a little bit later. Um, like later April, I'll start on those. Let's see. I liked them with the yellow buttons, so I stuck with those. I really think it's classic and kind of went with an older vibe for this kind of comic book style I wanted to try. Thank you so much. Oh, so what is it? Foul? Oh, can you write it again, Maudie? It, it cuts you off. Foul, foul language? Is that what it is? But with foul like a bird? <laughs> foul language. Languijo. Ah, uh, not it. But um, I don't even know if they're ducks. You know, kind of like Pogo. What is Pogo? You know, he's not really... He's not really a animal, and that's kind of how I feel about this other one. They kind of have animal vibes, but they're not animal, or they're not like a particular animal kind of a thing. Messing with Donald. <laughs> they're just messing around with him. Totally, totally doing it. Okay, I gotta take a little drink to drink. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll do yellow. Yellow fellow. Again, these are really dark tones so that I can brighten it afterwards. I really dig this yellow for his legs too. And I'll come in with like more pastel colors afterwards. 
I love doing this first because it's like so harsh that all of a sudden like people are like, oh, yeah, it's a little dark. I don't know if I like that. And then all of a sudden I add all my bright colors and I'm like, yay, it's not horrible. Huh, Astrid. You're just going to sit down there and look at me like I'm torturing you after I just fed you and loved on you. Okay, that's cool. Cats, man. They don't want to be around you until you're busy. And then they're like, oh, okay, I'll take it. I'll hang out with you now. So I really think this one needs to be a print. I really, really, really do. I'm so glad you enjoy the process. I love watching people's props, but prop up is about that. But here's what I hate. I use my phone for everything. So whenever I start watching people like draw live or go on pop shop or whatever it is, I'm like, oh, I need my phone to post. Oh, I need this. And then I'll grab my iPad and I'll start watching. And then I realize like my iPad's going to die and I need to draw on it later. So it, I always feel bad I can't get on everybody's like lives and stuff. I, and I want to. I want to like support everybody the way they support me. They support so much. And um, I never seem to be able to find the time to do that. So I'm sorry to everybody out there in the world. Oh no, I did something naughty. I put a little red where that other yellow is supposed to go. Once you do red, there's no going back. Like the, it, like it inks everything so deeply and has such this strong pigment that it just shows up through everything. But it's okay. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny space that you won't be able to see very well and if I can get the yellow back on it I will covered it up in blue try to fix that but a print okay I'm I'm really excited about it I really 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 want to do a print of this one so I realized I used that red I've been trying to use a another red that doesn't really do what those do um it doesn't like taint the painting I guess is the best way to put it like when you start painting and you get that red somewhere, you're like, nope, there is no coming back from this. That red is going to be on your painting forever. So if I got it like on the white for the fingers, ooh, there'd be no coming back. I'd have to start a whole new painting, so I have to just be really careful. But if a dark color like brown is going over it, it doesn't matter. It's when you try to do a lighter color over that marker. It's no good. No good, I say. Okay, so there's that. So this is what I should have been using. Shame on moi. Armoire, armoire. Um, I'm gonna add black to the back of the mouth, but I'm gonna end up softening it with like a crimson so we can kind of see his teeth. Um, okay, 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 okay. So excited to paint this one. That is how I know I did good because I will be so excited to paint. And when I don't like it, I'm like, just get me through it when I'm so excited about it, which I never thought with a Donald Duck piece, I would be this excited to paint it because I just don't like my Donalds. But I told myself, I said, self, I says, <laughs> um, you're going to like it. You're going to do it. You're going to like it. I know his neck's kind of disappearing. I'm realizing I need to find where that white is going to go, but that's just on blue. So we're all good. Um, but yeah, it's really rare when I like Donald's, the Donald paintings and ah, I'm so excited about this one. Okay. So like I said, I kind of accidentally covered up his neck, but that is all right because I'm going to be painting over it. So it's fine. Um, instead of using the zebra pen, I'm using my black, um, coloring marker. Uh, and I'm going to go very carefully cause this is, um, once I mess this up, that negative space is background. And I'd have to bring the blue up higher or find a way to camouflage it. And I don't want to do that. So pointy side it is, less of the thicker side. And then this is that big, beautiful band that goes across the hat. Super excited about that. Thanks to all four of you, whoever you are tuning in. And if you're not signed into YouTube and you can't chat, hi. Thank you. If you're saying it's cute, thank you. If you're saying it's ugly, well, you know what? It's just not for you. <laughs> okay, so we've got that far. All right, now I'm gonna use yellow, yellow. Let's try this yellow first. And I just kind of tap on the popcorn with yellow because remember, not all popcorn is like all the way yellow. Most of the time, if you make real popcorn, not 
douse it in like all the bad stuff at the movie theater like I do. Um, it's usually white and then you add, you know, your stuff to it. Hi, Roro! Mwah! I just cleaned my Alice in Wonderland uh, tapestry that you gave me or blanket. I mean, whatever you want to call it. I use it as a blanket. The kitties love it too. And Greg loves it. And it goes with my bedding, that yellow bedding, so beautifully. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, now I'm going to chip in Dale. Be very careful when I type this in so we don't get photos I don't want. Okay. Um... And I'm just getting it for their coloring. I know their coloring, but like it helps to kind of look at it. Okay. So the one thing with the concept dual tip markers, and I've mentioned this before to anyone who's ever followed, is that their colors do not match the tops of what they are. This one is brown gray, but it's almost a yellow tone and what I would have used for the belly. Um, I'm so happy, Roro. <laughs> getting down to the bottom of the comics. Maybe, Maudie, maybe it's like classic but not Sunday morning um, comic strip that I'm thinking. Maybe it's just a comic, you know, like it never made the um, the newspapers. You know, you know what? Could be, could be the case. Um, I don't think I have the color I'm looking for for their belly. That's salmon pink. That is, oh, this might work just for now. No, that's too pinkish tone. I'm looking for like a yellow. Not that it matters. I've got the paint color I'll need. Whoa, that cap came off and it is all dried out. Yikes, that's not good. No good, no good. Okay, I'll just use this and I'll know that it's gonna be less pink and more yellow tones. So we will do this and I will add more of a, um, like a Nap not Naples yellow, um, almost like an ivory white. Keep kind of a yellow tone in there. And so many great ones, absolutely. Yes, enjoying it to the max. To the max. Um, again, this one is called, I don't even know. Mar oh, Marigold. So I'm going to test it out. That's not too bad for Dale. I'll, I'm going to end up painting over it, so I'm not worried. This one's for Dale. And again, stylizing him. He has white on his tail. Okay. And then Chip, we have brown, which is super easy. We just pick a brown. And yeah, Chip's probably my favorite in the piece. And I know when I do the print, it'll be more specific to what my lines were. Um, when you paint, you start to lose your line work and you don't see it as well. So it is what it is. So the print will be a little closer. Now, when I'm gonna do the print, I don't know. This is what I tell everybody. I never know when I'm gonna come out with prints. And it's gotta be one I love or highly desired. Like people are like, I need it. Right now I'm feeling that with my Luna painting being turned into it. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Um, I'm just feeling so much love with that Luna piece. I'm like, thank you so much, everybody. So that's when I usually am like, okay, that goes up to the top. Like people are really digging it. So um, now we're gonna work on the grass a little bit before I start my painting. But thank you so much for saying it's cute. Um, it means a lot to me because I get nervous. Just because I like it doesn't mean other people are going to like it, especially the customer who ordered it. I'm like, Arr. So commissions. Um, let me explain something. Back in the day, uh, large scale paintings terrified me. Um, I don't know why, but I'm just not good at murals. I used to do them. I really didn't like it. I would leave a customer's house and felt like they hated it. Granted, I was st I was not good back then. And the fact that people thought I was good, I'm like, all right, but they were awful. Like if I go back with friends that do art, I'm like, this was one of my first murals and they were like, this is terrible. I don't really have a lot of those photos anymore. They're all kind of gone. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, I just, you know, I was good at the time, but wow, bad, bad, bad. And that's not even imposter syndrome. That is a true fact. 
I wasn't skilled, I didn't know what I was doing, but expanding something big without using what we have now, which is like really nice projectors, it was the like junior tracer projector that you just hope blows the picture up enough. You'd have to do it in sections of your painting. It was awful. And um, I was no good. Anyway, the point is this stuff scared me, but the way I showed you guys, I do it on my iPad. And for those that missed it, let me re reiterate that are jumping in. Okay. Um, what I do is I do a screenshot of it fairly small, not crazy small, but fairly small, because here's the thing. When you're drawing in Procreate, you can accidentally erase lines. It's really bad. So um, I go into my camera and I can change the sizing. I could even start to trace here on something big and then move it. I mean, you might scale it down, but um, it should work, you know? Mallard Fillmore. Mallard. See, I feel like it's something like that. That's why when you said one of them, it sounded like it. Mallard. Sorry guys, we're trying to figure out what this is reminding me of based off a comic book strip. And I don't know, no, you're so good. Now you're thinking duck so much, but it does. It still does look like this one. And I wanna say it's along the same. Oh, no, you're right. Hold on, you're right. <laughs> Hold on, it's the, um, it is Mallard Fillmore. It's not the main duck. As you scroll, you start to see the other characters. So this person you said is Bruce Tinsley. Okay, Bruce Tinsley. Bruce, oh my gosh, yes. If they have other things, I think he did other stuff. But I swear it wore like a hat. And um, oh my gosh. It might not be the exact one I'm thinking, but they could have done other comics. So that's why I was looking it up. So there's one when you look up Google images where a lady's taking his order, like a waitress who's also like a bird, and it looks more like her. So it's not this one, but it's getting really close to style. So yes, you're on the right track, my friend. I feel like it's two characters. So when the Pogo one came up, I was like, mm, that's more like it. Mallard Fillmore. So not the main deck, but like this one, like these. Hold on, let me show you. Like that, can you see it? Like these characters, that's the vibe I was getting. And whoever, like that artist, I looked up their comics and it doesn't, I don't know if they're doing any more of them. But, oh, you're good. You are very good at trying to figure this out. That's like my favorite when you guys start figuring it all out. It's called Shoe. Huh? Huh? Oh. Yes, okay, so we call that one Shoe comic you are getting down to exactly what my brain is thinking yes that's it that's it that's it that's it that's it shoe yes okay round of applause for Maddie. we've been going since the beginning of this live trying to figure it out jeff mcnelly and i want to see really quick if i'm following is he still around maybe it's just an artist that used to work on it and he still does stuff jeff mc Nelly. No, I don't think I don't think he's on there because I think I don't know if he's still around. That is it, my friend. Shoe. Oh, okay, guys. Shoe comics. Wonderful artwork. Incredible. The characters always look like, yeah, they're just birds in general. But man, you nailed it for me. That's all I could think. I know they're a little more sleepy looking, but <sighs> solid. Um, whatever house you are, Maddie. A million points to your house, okay? <laughs> whatever whatever Harry Potter house you are, that's it. That was the Jeff I was thinking of. I could see it in my mind, but shoe has nothing to do with anything. Exactly. That's why I, like, I was like, I'll know it when I see it, but I can't think of the name. Yes. But then the, the Pogo one is the other one, which I love because I named a little character Pogo that was very comic book style, and I didn't even realize there was a Pogo comic. So thank you again. You're amazing. Hello. You're wonderful. All right, so now we move into painting. Um, I've got my basic colors down so I know exactly what to grab. It's almost like color coding it, so it makes it awesome. Um, I need water, this is old water, so that's a no-go. Hi, Astrid, no, no churro for you. No churro, no. She loves these new snacks. I know they've been around a long time for cats, but she loves them. 
Give me one second. I forgot my dinner was sitting in a plate that I was supposed to start wrap. I wish I could still use plates to cover my stuff, but we have a mini, mini, mini fridge now. So I can't fit everything the way I used to, sadly. So I have to saran wrap it and use the plastic. Hi, baby girl. No, no churro. You've got your food tonight. You're good. We need water, Astrid. Water for my dish thing. Stuffs. There we go. Okay, water. Check. Let's go. Lights off. Unless we're using them, lights off. Good girl. Okay. We're teaching her how to be a good kid. All right. Uh, I can sleep peacefully now. That's I'm telling you. I was like, I know it was a thing. I just can't think of what it was. All right, I'm gonna go to my pale aqua. Do I have, yes. Okay. Right on to the background. And I do want um, rough edges. I don't want it to be perfect. And I'm not trying to stipple it nicely. I just want the vibe. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Okay, I'm gonna come over here, up here. So the drawing took me about mm, an hour to get what I was going for, and it took about three days because each day I worked on it, I wasn't totally feeling like doing it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, Astrid was getting drawn, I guess, and Mary Evelyn didn't finish her, and was like, I'm so sorry I never finished Astrid, and she jumped on the table and probably wondered where she was, and I said, listen, that girl gets so much love and attention, whereas Thor is more of a, a basic looking cat, sorry Thor, he's a cutie, but she gets the, oh my gosh, she's so pretty, all the time, and he gets like, oh, he's cute, so I said, he deserves this, he deserves it. They're doing the shoe ones again. Oh, so they're running them again? That's really cool. Yeah, I used to love those and I would clip those illustrations out, but I don't think I paid much attention to the name of the cartoon, I or the name of the comic. I just would do that. So yeah. So yeah. All right, so I'm going really carefully around my line work because I, I really wanna be able to get it as close as possible to what I had sketched since I really like the the lines that I chose it's rare when I get it pretty darn close to what was in my head and the stylizing so whenever that happens I really take my time if I'm just like eh, it's close enough and I'm okay with it I'll cover all my line work but when it's something very specific I'm like eh, no really keep that because I like the way their bodies were the way they were standing so this is where I said I can cover up that little mistake I did with his tummy and it's covered see very easy, very quick. And sometimes I'll cover line work because I don't really know if I like it and then I just kind of let things happen naturally for it. Okay, we're gonna use an angled brush if I can grab it. Every time I reach, I swear it disappears. There we go. And I'm gonna add my edging now, my angle brush. Like I said, I'll have like a tree branch kind of coming into the scene. So it's kind of silhouetting these characters and then has a little bit more. I don't want to follow the shape of the booty. I want the booty going out past the background. So I'm not worried about that. And I don't want to line up perfectly with my um, tail. So I'm trying to be careful about how I do this. Still not sure where I want my neck. I think the neck's gonna probably be like right there. The, I want his chest kind of sticking out so we can see that v-neck of his shirt starting. Um, how often do I replace my... <laughs> That's a funny question because um, I should do it more often. Um, I treat my brushes terribly, but I like when they fray and create character to it, you know. So, um, but I would say I get new brushes and keep my old brushes every three months 
but that doesn't mean I use them all the time. I still usually go back to my older brushes too. But yeah, I tend to use um, my old, my brushes until they're like just done, like really shouldn't be used at all. I say there's no rules on it, right? There's no rules on it. You work with what you got. But um, I think it's because as a face painter, I can, back then I couldn't afford brushes. So I just used whatever I could find and run to Walmart and just be stuck with those brushes for a long time. So there's that. Okay, so I'm adding that like texture to the bottom. Okay. Um, keep asking questions. Anything you have, I'll answer. Um, but yeah, that's, I would say that's normal. Um, I just recently went, I swear I've been documenting each time I go to Art Supply, but it adds up and then you get there and you're like, but I need this and I need that. But I just ended up with like new um, liner brushes. Liner brushes are the main ones and the other ones is I use these a lot with glue. And even though I soak them and I let them wait for a while, they tend to get really, really like, you know, the gum gets all yucky, the gum, the glue gets all gummy on them and just yucky, yucky, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not very nice. I know. I'm a bad goyle. All right, I'm going to leave my blues. Um, I want to add a little bit of clouds, but I actually want to use ivory white. I don't want to use white because Donald is very much white and so is the background. So I want to bring in, oh, it's not in this one. I think I added it to yellow. Sorry about that. Ivory white sometimes comes off as a yellow, and I put it in there. Let's see if I'm right. Um, maybe not. Where did I put it? Oh, ha ha! I never put it away. I remember seeing it on my desk somewhere. This is what happens when Eva cleans. I clean, but I don't do a very good job. It was along the edge. I saw it. It did. I promise. And then. Course. Now I need ivory white and I can't find it. It's so rare when I need it. Come on, ivory white. Where are you? I know you're here. Oh, okay. I see what you did. Eva did a fake put away. <laughs> it was like along the eye, the side of it. Um, what brand for liner? A million times over. I will never change my line brush unless someone can prove these are good or like it's better. Princeton. All Princeton brushes. And again, uh, Art Supply Warehouse. Um, Princeton till the day I die. Or, you know, like I said, something better comes out, maybe I'll consider it. But I am obsessed with them. The price, everything. So good. So good. So I'm adding a little bit of a background here. And I'm using a lot of water because I want it to be really thin in the background. I don't want this to be a really bright cloud. I want them to be more simple and fading away. I see a brush piece in there. There we go. And I'm just working them into the background. I want them to fade. I want them to be light. Very light. Boop, boop, boop. And if you guys are like, it is so quiet. Um, I'm not allowed to play anything in the background. I don't know how people get away with it on their accounts because I've had things taken away and I was like, I'm not losing all this hard work. So um, I was going to say, um, play some soft music in the background. You don't want to listen to me, mute me. Yeah. Did you cut your hair? Oh no, it's in a ponytail. <laughs> it's in a ponytail. Great question. Great question. Next question. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I need to get a trim though. It's been three or four months since I've done my hair. My hair just doesn't grow fast. But the last place I was at, we were about to move because the water, before we knew we were moving, the water is so hard at the last place I lived at the other apartment that um, my hair was just falling out and it was not cute. And I couldn't even brush through my hair when I got out of the um, out of the shower. So I was like, I'm sorry. I love my hair. I want to move. It took me forever to grow my hair this long. This is like eight years in the works. All right. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm feeling it. It's a little dirty looking, not my hair, <laughs> but the background. So I'm kind of coming back. 
My little boy holding the soda bottle in the background is so cute. Boy, soda, oh, wait, wait, are you talking about where he's holding his knees? <laughs> Did you think it was a soda bottle? Is that what you're talking about? This is um, a John K reference, uh, John K toy, which John K is terrible, but I love the character design. So it's like, again, I buy things that I'm like, I'm smart enough to know what the person was about, but character design is character design. I'm sorry, if it inspires me, it sticks around. Unless the person is so horrific, like they're just the worst. John K is pretty much that, but <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, Ren Stimpy was pretty terrible, and all the shows he did before that and after it were pretty terrible and not good for kids. That I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's rough. It's a it's a hard it's a hard thing. I don't know how how to like him without or like his work without like. Ugh. Um, when will you open more commissions? Um, I'm thinking next week doesn't mean I'll work on them next week. Like these guys, they got theirs during the Isle of Magic. And I was like, it's going to be about a five week turnaround, but I'm a woman of my word. Like absolutely. If I think I have to push it, I will. But, um, it's really rare when I do that. I'm usually like, no, it'll be done by the deadline. So this, I wanted to be done by tomorrow. That way it's pretty much five weeks from Isle of Magic. And uh, my customer's so epic and awesome. I know they're not in a rush. And I know most people asking for commissions are like, it's fine, take your time. But you're also like, hurry up. I know, I do too. I get all excited when I have a commission out there by an artist. One guy, I waited almost a year to get a commission. Um, but once I got it, I was like stoked because it was so good. Um, but then I don't like to do that to people. Plus I want it off my plate. But I also don't want to rush it because when you rush art, it just doesn't look good. So, okay, I think that's all right. I think, I don't know. I can always change things. Um, but next week, I think I'm opening a few um, portrait squatch ones where you have to be in the photo or someone you know that you want to gift it and they have to give you the permission like, oh yeah, you can use a photo of me. And you can even say like, can I use the photo of you that an artist is going to draw on? You don't know what it is. You still have to get like their permission because I don't want to be yelled at for painting on their picture. Um, I don't show anyone's pictures when they do it unless they allow me to. So there's that. Um, art and artists. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you got to you gotta consider the fact that, you know, at that time that was, it was in, right? Ren and Stimpy was in. Nickelodeon bought it, you know, people work for those people and then and then they find out it's bad and then they're like, oh, now we don't like it. And I'm like, well, at the time, though, we did like it. So you can't be mad at me. I like the nostalgia. Um, that's the aspect I go for. So, um, but yeah, the commissions next week, they'll probably, well, I don't know. They might sell out. I've upped my price on my little portraits. So I don't know. People might be like, no, thank you. And then I'll go back to, then I'll rotate and do commissions that are gonna be like, what characters do you want? But I'm really good lately about theming them. So I'll be like, it has to be Disney. It has to be anime. It has to be a Don Bluth film. It has to be a zibbidi zabbidi zoo, whatever it is. <laughs> zibbidi zabbidi zoo, skadoodle. Um, But it really is a fine line. It's it's tough, I say. And I don't like to defend people. I'm like, if I like their art and it inspires me, that's all that matters. I'm not, I'm not calling the artist and asking questions, you know. I'm, I'm just, I like their art. Is what it is. True fact, true fact. Okay, so I'm using white acrylic. Problem with white acrylic is it doesn't dry matte like um, acrylic paint. Acrylic wash, sorry. Acrylic paint doesn't dry matte like acrylic wash. It dries more glossy and shiny. So I usually thin it down and I just don't add as much of it. Kind of tap off some of it and let it just kind of blend in so it still has like a drier look. Um, but it's usually okay once, once it's dry. And I did my little like um, shadows my little shadows with the markers. So if I go really thin with it, 
they shine through and it kind of creates a natural um, shadow underneath, which is really nice because then I don't have to like constantly go over it with acrylic gouache later as a shadow over it. It's more underneath the paint, which looks really good, I think. I think it looks really good. Anyone going to WonderCon this weekend? I will not be. Um, no offense to any of my friends, but I am just enjoying life of catching up on things and getting ahead of the game. I have a lot of plans for this year, so as much as I, I'm so excited that my friends are there, I probably will save the money and not attend. But if you've never been and you're in the area, please consider going. It is very fun to go. Just adding a little bit of this white to the background, but not a lot. Um, how much are the Squatch commissions? Um, they're probably going to be like 50 to 60 bucks. I'm still thinking about it, but since it's digital and they're sending me a photo that I just add the character to, um, they go much faster and they're much easier. Uh, but you know, it's the customizing and getting something nobody else has and getting a little character that like, eh, so excited. But yeah, not you. Okay, you're not going. You're not going. You're not going. All right, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say back to Donald Duck. I wanna get my coloring somewhat similar. Donald Duck. And I just don't know if I want like a dark blue or kind of this smalt blue. I love that name, smalt. It's very Lord of the Rings small blue so this is why i said i did some of the work for myself hey hey oh sorry it's astrid scratching the top of the couch which is a no no because we have scratchers all over everywhere everywhere there's cat scratchers and she just refuses she said i'm no 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 i don't want to scratch that I want to scratch whatever i want then i'm gonna come over here and bite on your legs stop bubba you guys just ate before I went live. Do you remember this? You don't remember. You're pretending in front of the people. You're going to be this person. Are you going to be this kind of kitty? She does it on purpose. She knows she gets attention. Right? Do you know she gets attention from her mama? And then I go to sit on the couch to like end my night. And I'm like, okay, come here. And she's like, no, nah, I don't want to come near you. Okay, so this brush was not a good choice because I got a little bit off of the lines that I built for it, but now I'm just gonna clean it up with a sharp line. Okay, no, we're not biting my legs. She's churro crazy. She wants her churro snack. No, no, hey, <laughs> don't bite me when I'm painting. Don't do it. Your friends are watching and they know that you're being a naughty girl. No to go. Okay, so I still need um, another blue, and I think I'm gonna go to for highlight is gonna be light blue when I get to it. That will be the next one I do. Okay, but since that blue's drying, I'm gonna move on to yellow for the feet. Okay, and I'm gonna use my deep yellow and then bring in some highlights. The line work will probably be the longest thing, so that I'll probably do tomorrow because line work is so focused and the lighting is better in here during the day. These lights, honestly, we got them from Costco. They're canned lights. The can lights were already in the room, but they were really old and the, the color of them were so dark that I could barely see my page. So I was like, can you get new can lights? $15 for two can lights from Costco. And um, best choice we ever made because it really did. It added like daylight lights to this, but um, I'm still having a hard time just like really getting my eyes to focus at night regardless. So I like to wait for daylight. How's your new place? Amazing. Um, not to knock my last place because my last place, I was able to grow so much there, but... There were a lot of neighbors and they were very nice. Um, but I didn't realize how much anxiety I had leaving my house because everyone wanted to stop me and talk to me. And that sounds like I'm very popular. It's not. 
Um, some of them didn't want to talk about anything important. And I was like, I have so much stuff I need to do. And like, I just live here. <laughs> I don't necessarily need to be your friend just because I live next to you. And Greg would think that was so mean of me. But I'm like, I didn't choose to move next to you. Like, I just moved into an apartment. I've got my own privacy. So every time I'd leave to like go to the post office, I would usually go the last like 15 minutes of the day so that I could get the most out of my day or get shipping all ready, you know, and get as much out. And they would stop me and I'd be holding so much mail and I'm like, seriously, come on, you see I'm holding mail, you know, and I have to be like, I don't, don't make me the bad person. Like I'm a nice person. I just don't have time. I live here. I just want to go into my house and hide, you know? Um, good news for the last place was there was no one above us. There were only people under us. Uh, no, that's a lie. That's That came out as a whole lie. I meant to say there's people next to us. So we had someone on our left and someone on our right, but it was single, single story. So um, it was great. I mean, we didn't have anyone above us or under us like the apartment right before that one. That one was a terrible apartment. That one I can say was awful and you didn't want anyone talking to you because they were terrifying. We lived in a really bad neighborhood. And um, yeah, so to come here and be like in a back house is like, it's peace and quiet. I'm not worried about anyone bothering me. I'm not worried about someone knocking on my door asking me if I've seen their dog that they let loose because they didn't put it on a leash and like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, this is not my, I love animals and I'm sad that you didn't put them on a leash, but I can't go search the neighborhood for your dog for the eighth time because you didn't learn your lesson. <laughs> um, our upstairs neighbor sat on, oh, I mean, our upstairs neighbor sat on our balcony and made me not want to go out. Yeah, see that. And our backyard at the last place, we, um, our back wall had someone at their back wall and then we had someone on our side gate and someone on our side gate. So we go outside and when you talk, you hear everybody and their conversation. And our um, the place was so old that the window panes were single, um, single pane and you could hear just talking in your kitchen. And so I felt like we could never just be ourselves and just like feel confident. It was like, I can't talk about things. I can't talk about personal stuff because then our neighbors are going to know my personal life. Like it was not fun. I could hear my neighbor giving like his credit card info over the phone. <laughs> so um, when I started to go live there towards the end, a younger group moved in behind us. It was like four people in a, in a, in the apartment every day and they'd go in the backyard and they'd throw parties and I was like oh my gosh and they'd go till midnight and I you know when you're like I don't want to be the only one complaining because I'm the person that will get someone kicked out of the movie if they're on their phone the entire time like I, I don't care I paid for the entertainment I didn't pay for your phone <laughs> and then I'm like how did no one else think to get up and kick them out like how am I the only person so I always feel like that character in the movies when everyone's like but they were so like, you're the mean person, right? And they're like, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> so that's how I always felt. Hi, Time Trooper. Um, let me just see what you guys were saying as I was rambling. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm going to, like, sneeze. Um, I wish I could. Let me how to do it. Um, they should see that you are busy, especially carrying mail. I'm talking bags and boxes in my arms and they would still talk to me. They would follow me to my car and like talk to me at my car. Or I'd come in and they'd be like, so how are you doing? I'm like, I really need to get inside. I have a live that I'm doing on my Instagram. I really gotta go. And they're like, what's your Instagram? I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> Cause I didn't want anyone knowing me, you know? Like I just wanted to get inside and not because I couldn't have conversations like this. Um, I would stop you if I was your neighbor. <laughs> but I would know when you're busy. Yeah, so glad you found this place. Yeah, um, we're still very much quiet about this location because it is a back house, so we're not like, hey, we live here. You know, I would never give away where I live or anything because, you know, that's private. But, um, but I do live um, in a wonderful, wonderful new place that I am very fortunate that Greg knows the friends he does, and he grew up here in Anaheim his whole life. So he knows people and has connections. I don't. I don't know, like, I know people now 
I've lived here for a while, but um, I don't know people like from childhood out here. So Greg just was fortunate enough to have friends um, that, that had an opportunity open up and they also knew what I did, so they weren't mad about it. I was like, I'm gonna be filming, I'm gonna be loud, I'm gonna be obnoxious, and they're like, well, we can't hear you. So it all worked out, everything worked out. But it took a really long, long time to get here. Um, I mean, seven years was a long time to find where I, where I felt like I had a safe place and somewhere I could just breathe. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And if Time Trooper wrote something, I might have missed it because it didn't pop up here. So if Trooper Postcard's saying something, please let me know. If you're just laughing that I yelled trooper, then that's okay. Um, oh, I, oh, I don't know. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Hit up Craig if he knows about housing. Trust me, I he took forever to like finally, I mean, this was just by chance. It, it wasn't even going to be a thing and it was by chance. We would still be in our last place. So that's why I'm like, our last place was not bad. The actual place was really great. It really was. But at the same time, um, it just was one of those things where it was great that first two years. But by the third year, I outgrew the space. Me, I outgrew it. And I was like, I'm sorry. I have all this shipping stuff and I need this and I need different sizes and then I came up with something new and now I'm ordering a hundred mystery boxes and now I'm doing this and and so Greg was like yeah it's time to just move because it's just too much but we couldn't afford anything so you know having somebody he knew work with us um, so we could be comfortable you know comfortable enough so I can continue doing what I love I mean, it's hard to prove three times your rent when you work for yourself. It's it's hard to prove three times your rent when you don't work for yourself um, and everyone's asking for it. So I know a lot of people will see that I live here and be like, oh, she's so lucky. She must be rolling in the dough. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. I, I'm still I'm still where I've always been. I'm still working on things. Um, but yeah. And some people move every year, which grosses me out. I swear I couldn't do that. And hi, my um, I didn't even see you slip in here. This is so cool. Uh, let's see. I'm just listening. I'm writing postcards. Oh, yay, Trooper. Just the eyes. Yeah, the whole. So here's what I'm adding. I'm adding some layers to the bill to add shading and highlight. Same to the legs. Um, but thank you so much, you guys, for spending your, your Friday night with me. Greg has, like, a van run tomorrow. They do, like, um, they meet up and they do... Oh, I know what my cat wants. Give me one second. Hold on. I know what she wants. Oh, I feel terrible. I'm a bad mommy. Okay, hold on. You wanted. you wanted your litter box. I'm sorry, baby. I forgot to bring it in. It's nighttime. There you go. There. That's what she wanted. She wanted her litter box. It's getting tricky because our last place, we didn't have to do a litter box. They, we had a little back porch that was closed in so we could just let her go outside. But here they were having like, I think a run in with a coyote or a raccoon. I remember the last van run. Yeah. Um, yeah, bathroom. Go ahead. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe she just wants more food. I swear she could eat all day. Can't any pet. Um, but yeah, this one is like, um, it's not like a van van run like our last one was. It's, I said hour. I was there, so I called it hour. Um, this one they're doing like at a local park. And they're doing like games and they give away trophies. It's like their own little group that's been around since like the 70s and Greg is the vice president so of the club so um he has to be there for all of it so tonight they're working on all the trophies for the prizes and the games and stuff 
he's really excited. He invited me and I was like, um, I just have stuff I have to do. I have to meet with a friend I haven't seen in forever. We've planned this and I just want to make sure I'm there. And, um, yeah, so catching up with her ever since the pandemic kind of died out. A lot of people want to meet up and stuff and it's, it's just been really hard because I'm trying to balance everything. But I want to see my friends I've known for so long and, um, you know, they're finally coming back out and I'm like, um, but if I work all weekend, I won't be able to see you. But, um, but it's stuff like I want to get caught up on. So luckily... We're just doing like a little quick lunch and then she knows how much I love. I love being home and working. So she's like, we don't have to spend all day together. I just need, I got something for her at a swap meet. So she was coming over anyway. Um, I'm obsessed with you and your art. Oh, Myra, don't be, first of all, don't be sorry. I'll take it all day. Um, I'm so glad it makes you happy. I'm so glad you found me through like pop shop, right? This is why I love Pop Shop. I just noticed the tiny squatch in the corner of your video. Oh yeah, it's my watermark, just in case. Uh, obsessed with you. <laughs> what? Aren't we all? Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, it's, I don't know where it is, where you guys are watching, but it's usually the bottom right. It's super tiny and it's just a watermark so people can't steal my content. That's all. That's all it is. Ain't nothing fancy. But I picked the ghost squatch back in the day when I set it up and I just haven't updated anything new. Astrid, I brought in your thing. You had food. There are kitties out there starving. And you ate your food and the vet says we have to take it easy because you're gaining some weight, girl. Gaining some weight. And that's because I feed you too much. So we slow it down. We're working on it together, okay? It's an adventure together. I'm also slowing down on eating food, <laughs> a lot of food. <laughs> trying, I'm trying. Trying not to be a glutton. Okay, so we're just working on this. Um, bottom right, there we go. Yeah. Bottom right, bottom right. Now my lightest blue is pretty much the blue in the background. So I don't want to do too much of this. I just want the teeniest little highlights. And I'm going to use um, my teal blue, which isn't necessarily part of Donald's normal look. But in this case, it's my Donald. So I can add it if I want to. Okay, so I said not a lot. And of course, a ton of it shows up. So now I'm going to go back with... Um, what was that? That was light blue. I wonder what aqua blue looks like. There she goes. You guys, she's going to the bathroom. Doesn't that make you feel special? It makes me feel special. Ooh, this aqua blue is pretty. Okay, that's what I was going for. Oh, there they go. Astrid, you're so weird. She freaks out whenever she comes out, <laughs> out of the litter box. Those her little feet. Ramba damp dampas. Just running around. Ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop. So like I know where some shadows will be and not be. And I'm having such a hard time losing it. But here's the thing. Did we not just love the way we felt during the lockdown of eating all the foods and being like, well, I have nowhere I have to be. <laughs> um, I gained a lot during the lockdown. And last year I used Noom and I got myself down um, 10 pounds. I'm slowly gaining it back because the holidays, right? That's always our excuse. But I'm like, nope, summer is coming. I need to. I don't really care how much I, I like weigh or anything. I don't do it for anyone but myself. But um, I like the way I feel when, you know, when I saw that I had dropped some weight, I was like, this feels good. I feel like me again. And I wasn't as yucky feeling as all the time. But I'm not forcing it. I'm just kind of letting it happen. But I learned a lot from Noom in the three months I did it and I don't have the app anymore, but then Maria told me that you can still have the app for Noom. You don't have to pay for it, you can still do it. It just, you don't get a trainer, you don't get like all the little skills with it, but you can still log your points and find out like how much. And what I learned from Noom, the majority of it is portion. It's just keeping track of your portions. So you can have chocolate cake, but why don't you just have a little bit of chocolate cake and not a full slice? And I noticed that's all I was doing. I was just knocking down my proportions the whole time. 
So with that said, maybe that will help people to realize you can eat whatever you want. Just don't eat so much of it. Tonight I did pasta. Um, I had like a cheddar pasta, frozen, all natural, like no additives. Um, it had cheese, you know, and then it had broccoli. Um, and then I made cauliflower and I mixed it all together. And then um, I, like I said, I just saran wrapped half of it. I was like, if I can eat half, then the other half goes in the fridge. I had an orange to kind of curb the little extra yum yums I wanted and a little banana. And I was like, there. That extra food I ate was like good for me foods. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I've been doing to get around it, if you will. But I'm back to just portion sizes, you know, like I don't need this whole sandwich. I just need a quarter of it and then I will eat the rest later. But I don't punish myself for eating things I want. Because if I want it and my body craves it, then I want to know this could have been my last meal. And I eat it. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> um, it was comfort, but sitting on Zoom all day. Oh, yes. That's me sitting at my desk. I'm not really burning any colors. I have to remember to get up, walk around. Luckily, my new place, my second studio is downstairs, so I go up and down the stairs pretty much all day. Um, it was really good. And again, it was just frozen food in the Ralph section, and it's like pre-made one of those ones you throw in the microwave. Am I proud that I use the microwave? No, but I'd rather do that than eat fast food. So I'm like, pick your <laughs> pick your issue. And that was a lot of the food I ate because Greg's not usually home for dinner or lunch. It just doesn't happen. So I'm usually on my own and that's kind of a good thing. I used to be sad about it, but now I'm like, no, it's good. Because one, I don't have to plan for him. Um, Two, I tend to eat more when he's around just because, you know, I'm comfortable and I know he loves me no matter what. So I don't really get care about being judged. Um, but I was doing a lot of microwave foods and single, single serving foods. And that's when I still lost weight. If I wanted a sandwich, I would just take one bread slice out, not two. If I want a peanut butter and honey sandwich, I don't make a full one. I just take half and fold it in half, you know. And then I switched from white breads to like, um, what is it, like honey wheat bread. So it still had like a sweetness to it. It's all about tricks. Um, my chat was in the way. Now I see the adorable little ghost squatch. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you so much. A lot of it is I was a dancer and I wear layers. Okay, layers are the trick. It sucks you in. <laughs> okay, so here's where we are right now. See how it's starting to really come together. Um, still working on it. Okay, um, ba, 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 bo, bo. I'm gonna go to um, white again, and I'm going to start adding where I want the neck and the chest to be because I accidentally colored over it. But I know I want him kind of having a little bit of his chest right here, kind of like some hair, and a little bit of his neck poking out over the, um, there we go, in the back of that. And then um, when I do my line work, it'll cover up some of that white so you won't see as much of it. Okay, so right now it looks a little weird, little chest hairy, but that's cool. Um, yes, Myra, absolutely. And thank you so much, you guys, you're being so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I always tell, my friends, like, it's a cover-up. And black is the best thing you can do for yourself to slim yourself. <laughs> Turning sideways is not my favorite. Straight on look is great. Um, it's the best thing. Yes, and it took a long time to find somebody that accepted me for me, Myra. So, you know, I think I was like 33 when I met Greg. I've met him a lot b before that, but we were just friends before. Um... Thank you, I'm in love with it, so darn cute. Thank you, how did you come up with this technique of coloring with marker? During the pandemic, um, Jerry's Artorama had me as an ambassador for a short time, um, and they sent me this. And I was like, I don't use markers. What, what am I supposed to do with these markers? And I colored on a page and I was like, goodness gracious, these aren't like the Copic ones, they're like really dark. And then one day I did marker for the Hula Girl Shaved Ice. They have it at their, at their um, 
location where they sell their um, like Dole Whip and stuff in Huntington Beach. And I drew a little picture for them to say thank you because they were giving me shout outs and they were doing really nice stuff for me at the time. And so I painted or I did it all in marker and I was like, if I could just highlight the hair with blue, I'll use paint really quick. And I brushed my dry brush over it and I was like, hold on, what did I just discover? So it was an accident and it was during the pandemic. As soon as I did that, I was like, this is amazing because it's creating all the dark tones and hiding the white specks that you usually get when you just go with paint on white, it doesn't totally work. So this masks it first and then you use that as highlights. And then you can use your low lights in it too, but see like that, that shadow is coming through from the marker that I used on it, which was really cool and it just adds it really quick. Um, you wear lots of black, exactly. My mom's like, why do you wear really dark clothes? I'm like, because I'm making myself look much skinnier than I am. <laughs> Is that okay? And I'm not, I am not a body shamer. I believe people should have curve. Okay, thank you very much. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I just, I know how I want to feel. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to be skinny, but I just want to at least like myself um, to where I can look in the mirror and feel confident, you know? Plus, like, when Greg met me, I was probably the thinnest he's ever known me. And, you know, when you start to change who they met, he was fine. He didn't care. He even tells me, like, you shave your head, I'll still love you. And I'm like, well, shaving my head is awesome. I pretty much already did that. So um, I was like, I love shaved heads. Um, but, you know, like, it was nice to know I had somebody that just said, I don't care what you look like. It won't change the way I feel about you. I tell him, you just wait till I get older. And he's like, I just think your mom's so cute and you look like your mom and like you'll be such a cute older lady. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know if I should tell my, my mom that you said that. But he's like, no, your mom's just adorable. And so he thinks I'm cute. He's saying that he thinks I'm cute. Anyway, but I do look a lot like my mom. When I was younger, I didn't look like my mom. I looked like my dad and my dad's mom. And now that I'm getting older, I'm getting rounder in the face. And so I look more like my mommy's and she's cute. So I'll take it. I'll take it all. Bring it on. Um, nothing wrong with looking like a woman. Yes, <laughs> our bodies were built to do things that I may never do, you know, like I may never have a kid. But, um, you know, I, I praise women that are moms. I'm like, I don't know how you do it. I don't. I've worked with kids for years. And everything I did with kids, I was like face painting and working in after school programs, teaching dance, teaching art. Um, they are darling. But I do not want them. <laughs> it made me realize I don't want a kid. And my mom always joked, like, please don't ever have children you have such an issue with pain and you always have problems you're gonna be the weird kid that gets some weird thing happen to you if you get pregnant so um but no I've never wanted kids but I always think to myself like hey my body is built to be a certain way so you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be mad at it I'm gonna own it I'm a curvy girl come from a curvy mama I'm a curvy girl and I'm okay with that and that's all right that's all right with me I'll take it. I'm here and I'm happy. And that's all that matters. And that's all that matters. Okay. Really focused on Donald tonight, just so you guys know. I mean, I'll get over to Chip and Dale at some point, but maybe not here. I have a nice, uh, I have a, wait, sorry. Have a nice weekend and see you next fall. Yes. See you next fall. <laughs> he is the one. I don't know. We won't tell Greg so much, okay? We don't want him thinking he's got it all figured out. You know, I might mean, still make him work a bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. At this point, I'm all about doing what's best for myself. That's like my art, all of it. And luckily he just supports that. He supports everything I do and I support what he does. You know, if it makes him happy to do slot car racing and have a van club, then by all means, go for it. I'm happy that you're happy. And if you give me my alone time to work on my paintings and not come in and be loud, 
by all means. He has been really awesome though. We do make cookies, not every night, but a good chunk of the night. It's like he'll come home with the cookie dough and then he makes half of them and then we share the half. So we get like three or four cookies each. But um, it's been really nice to have somebody come in and just be like, I'm gonna make cookies. And I'm like, that's great. I'll make dinner for myself if you can make me cookies. I'll be so, so excited. But in the morning I try to make us breakfast. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, so up next, we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna use acrylic white to block out my blue, and then I'm gonna use yellow over it. Same with my buttons. I'm gonna make them yellow first, and then I will, or I mean white first, and then I'm gonna use yellow to block out um, the buttons. Because what's happening is um, it got a lot of blue on it and I feel like it's not going to show up as nicely. I'm gonna get those teeth in here. He's kind of gritting his teeth. Gritting, 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 gritting. I know the word. I know it. Okay. Yes, and do puzzles. I love the puzzles. Our problem is we didn't realize that poster was as big as it was. So now I have to go to Art Supply Warehouse and get a cold press board the right size for the puzzle because it's going to be much bigger than we thought. I mean, it's it's movie poster size, but like not your typical mo movie poster. I'm talking the original OG movie posters that are huge for that puzzle. So we're going to need a really big board. So if we move it and we have to frame it or glue it down or whatever, we can you know have it on there already. Okay, so there we go. And since I have red, I'm gonna start on my bucket. And when everything is fully, fully, fully painted and dry, I'll go back and erase any blue lines from the sketches. focus because these are like lines I'm like don't screw up the lines Eva don't do it <gasps> don't do it and I know Greg said he was gonna be home at sometime around 9 or 10 so it's a possibility possibility doom what time was it it's 10 5 he could be coming home right now for all I know who knows? It's Greg. No one knows. No one never knows. Ooh. Okay. Let's see. Do you guys glue your puzzle? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we actually, we've done a puzzle before, but then we ended up just, you know, breaking it up, putting it in a box, sealing it, like taping it all up and saying like it has every piece in it and then like gave it to like a thrift store or whatever. We usually don't go to, we don't donate to Goodwill. Um, we just hate that they jack the prices up. We usually find like um, Salvation Armies and like little ma and pa places, but we always tell them like, hey, we're not the people to play jokes on people. If we get a puzzle from a thrift store, we want to know it has all the pieces. Um, so we'll like seal it up once we know like every piece from the puzzle went in. Um, we like to give them to other people, but the Dragon's Lair one, we can't seem to find the movie poster reproduction anywhere. I keep saying movie poster. It's a movie poster of the game. We can't ever find that one anywhere, like, especially in like good condition. And then, um, the Space Ace one we actually found. So we were like, well, let's get the puzzle and then we'll have a puzzle of Dragon's Lair. It'll give us something to do and time to spend together. And then, um, the, the Space Ace one is just the poster. So that'll be good. So here's what I was saying about the Donald. See how shiny the white is on his face? See how there's like a shine and the rest is matte? That's why I don't really like to use those. Um, thank you so much for saying the highlights look good. I love shading and all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm feeling like, and this is me being very, I don't wanna say ADD, because sometimes I think that word gets thrown around a lot. Um, when people are like, I'm ADD, and I'm like, no, you just like to start somewhere else for a little bit. I need a little bit of a tree coming in. I just feel like 
I need to see something in this top right corner because it's driving me crazy. So I'm just gonna grab a chisel brush, brush, brush. I'm gonna brush. <laughs> New words. Um, a chisel brush, and I'm gonna start on a little kind of tree branch coming in. It's just going to kind of ease its way in. I've just been staring at my page and I could start to see it kind of coming into the frame, but fading out. So I'm just kind of kind of dry brushing. And it's gonna have multiple colors on it. And I'm just kind of getting an idea of it. Okay, this is me thinking process. And let's see. You love the colors. Thank you so much, Roro. Gave my sister a frame puzzle with the center piece missing. I kept the one piece and framed it. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. I love that. I really love that. I do, I do, I do, I do. That's really neat. Now, did you do it to be facetious or did you do it because it's like, I have a part of your, your puzzle? You're like, I'm part of your puzzle or something. I don't know. Something uh, poetic? Or are you like, no, I just kept it because I didn't want her to have it and drive her nuts. <laughs> what kind of sister are you? Which one of those? Um, she hates it. I wanted to save the centerpiece to put it in last, but she kept putting it in. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now that's even fun. See, that's what kind of sister you are. No. How far apart are you guys in age? Are you older? Are they younger? Um, I mean, are they older? Isn't it funny how siblings like it's rare. It's rare when you find anybody where they really got along with their sibling, unless there was a huge age difference. This is what I find. I'm not saying it's every case. I'm just saying a lot of the times it's the case. Like, they didn't get along. They weren't friends. Nobody, they never liked each other until they got older, et cetera, et cetera. It was a fun night together, so it's a good memory. Okay. Oh, hello, tree. You're there now. Welcome. Welcome to the party. You're gonna get leaves on you, and we're gonna fill it up a little bit on this edge. But I just felt like it needed some. It was driving me crazy. It looked too, too simplistic. And it needed more. I was like, give me, give me more. Nine years younger, wow. Don't you know, the younger sibling gets to do everything. <laughs> I was the younger sibling, by the way. So I can say that. I got away with a lot and it was not okay. I feel really, really, really bad. Um, let's see. Let me grab some of this. This is all with the chisel brush. I haven't changed from the chisel brush yet. Okay. Go. 
Makes sense to have there with the two chipmunks ready to, yes, there you go. See, building the story. Yes, I love that. I love when people like, I don't know. It just makes me really happy, okay? That's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. I love that you guys are like focused on what's happening here. You're getting the story, you're figuring it out, and you're liking it, I hope. Okay. Um, what, to do, what to do? I'm going to take Misty Blue and add a little bit more shadow to Mr. Duck over here. That has red on it. Clear off the red. I swear, red just it ruins everything. Makes my water messy. It makes everything start to have that on it. Okay. Just adding a little bit of this to add a little low light. And I'm gonna add We're gonna add just a little bit of a shadow under the eye. The black will stand out more, but just giving him a little bit of shadow under his eye. Let's see. Um, the <laughs> we're picking up what you're putting down. That's what my my boyfriend's mom always says. Think they will spill some of the popcorn? Yep, you're right. And there's gonna be a little bit of popcorn on the ground from the little scuffle. You got it. You get it. Got it. Good. You gotta pretend to be in the scene, I'm watching it go down, you know? Um, okay, Donald is just about, I need those yellows for the sleeve. So we're gonna bring this yellow back and then get it a little lighter. So we're using deep yellow again, kind of like his bill, but we don't wanna match the bill. But the white is gonna make it pop, see? The white is what really changes your paint from just kind of the drab that I added over the marker to um, to a really bright, uh, pretty much the color that's in the tube is what you're getting. It's not getting muddied by anything. Okay, we got that. We got that, got that. And then I'll add a little bit of brighter yellow when it's dry. Angry Donald said, like that. It's got a little bit of the tree there. I'm pulling it. Marty placed the words right out of my mouth. Marty said, they're running up the tree. Perfect. Come on, take it up there. So we keep moving. We don't stay in one spot too long. We move on to something else while other things are drying. I added a little bit of a deep red and now I'm gonna go in with a crimson into that little gap where it's black. And that way when it dries, it's gonna have this kind of reddish deep red pop to it. So it won't just be a black tone, but it'll still be dark. See what happens to my table? I get so excited, I bring over all my colors, I jump around and then like, it is what it is. Okay, um, you do that good, oh thank you. I remember when I learned how to do the little Donald Duck voice, I still can't talk with it. I can just make the little irritated sounds, you know? See, I, can, I can't say words with it. I wish I could. Maddie, I'm sure can, because she can do everything voices. So good. So good, so good. Okay, I'm gonna clear a little of my stage here. Put some things away, because if I stay how I am right now, it's just, I'm gonna bump into things, and I'm like, why didn't I just clear my space? So, no crying Eva today. I'm gonna be a big girl. All right, I'm gonna grab my little line brush. And then, oh, sorry, Just pressing that. Okay, gonna work on a little, um, I don't know, ribbon coming off the top of the hat. Okay, it's gonna come around. Want to attach it into the hat, which I haven't done yet. There we go. 
now it's like jet black, but I'll use a dark blue to a little bit of a light blue to add um, some highlight into that. I need this black to really separate. So this is why adding black is so much fun because it just really makes everything start to come together. Okay, I'm gonna turn my page just a little. A little too angled, so I'm gonna pick it up. That way I can hopefully get my eyes angled correctly. There we go. Definitely better. Okay, I'm gonna get my line work on the edges. You've never been a, come on. <sighs> it's like I push my tongue as flat as I can against the back of my mouth. I'm doing this. And then I go like. <sighs> and then I just. <sighs> <laughs> and then I just, that's how I always did it. <laughs> so weird when you're by yourself and someone isn't doing it with you. I swear I just dropped two followers when I started doing it. They were like, um, and we're not here for this. Um, but anyway, that's how I do it. Yeah. And then just. <laughs> it just happens. Okay. And that's Eva's way of doing that. All right, we scoot in a little more. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of this yellow ochre. I was peeling up some of the paper. So if you ever notice your paper is starting to come up in the background, um, you'll start to notice like every time you pull a little bit of the paper starts to wrinkle under it, you let it dry. Let it dry, if you keep messing with it, it's not gonna be a good thing. You're gonna be really upset. You can just be patient and wait. So um, then I go back and I work on it once it's dry because that paint is gonna act almost like a glue and it's gonna hold it down. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more of that. And my focus was very much Donald tonight, so I wasn't too worried about Chippendale. I was like, I'll get to them. I don't wanna rush it. Gonna use a Filbert split brush or split brush or I'm trying to think of all the words of Filbert grainer is what this one's called. And that way I start to kind of add more of a feathering and it does like a natural feathery kind of vibe to it. Grainer. And then I add a little bit more. And this way I'm kind of covering up those shadows I made, but still giving it a little bit of texture so it looks like feathers. And it isn't like perfect here. Okay, so see, I finally added that neck in to where I wanted it. I'm glad you do. Got it for a second and last. Well, Maddie, now you have something to practice. I never would have thought that you wouldn't know how to do that ever. Talking with it is really difficult, but I think you if once you get that sound down, you'll be able to figure out how to do it. I've tried, but I lose the while I'm trying to say something. I, I can't keep the sound. Um, but yes, love it. Love it, live it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, of course I put the brown away. That's the one I want. Come on, get it together, Grouch. Well, Lisa, I'm shocked you're up. Do you have a hard time sleeping? Cause you should be like Betty by right now. Something else to practice when you're alone in your car. Yeah, it, it didn't take me long. And I know I've been doing it since I was like in seventh grade or something, but it really didn't take me that long once I got the, the, the rhythm down. It's not like um, blowing a bubble or whistling, right? You just push your lips together, blow like this. <laughs> I 
I used to force trees so much and now I realize they're very organic. It's just kind of just let your brush wander in different shades of colors. Try not to be too specific with things, but adding an under shadow is gonna make things look like the tree has um, like knots and the little holes in it you can keep going, doing, I don't know. And pushing down on your brush and lifting start to create it. Now I'm not great at trees, but I'm definitely getting better than I used to be. Okay, and I'll be adding leaves. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Um, can't turn your brain. Yep, I, I got it. I understand you. This is when I started doing the ASMR because it's listening to someone until I like fall asleep. Um, YouTube, look up ASMR. It might work for you. You could do like ASMR stories, ASMR sounds, the best of ASMR. You could do ASMR music. So it's not people, it could be music. But yeah, this is a good place to be to forget them for a while. Yes, Madi. If you ever see me next to you at a, a red light, no, you didn't. I don't I don't know what the rest of it says, but I'm sure it's great because I don't have my YouTube on of myself. I get too distracted. I just stare at myself. I'm like, hello, that's me. I'm like me. That side. Just kidding. But not really. Because it is distracting. Not because I'm into myself. Okay. Um, yellow, I'm going to move. So... Maybe tomorrow morning I will pick back up with this and start on Instagram and finish up the rest of it. I just wanted to make sure I got some of this for a YouTube stream because I haven't done a YouTube stream like this uh, for a little bit. Um, is that Greg? So we're just adding some leaves here and there. And just like the branches, I'm gonna let things just kind of fall off the page as they dry. Move on to another green. So that's our darkest. We get a little bit lighter. Thank you so much when you mentioned it, ASMR. Yep, you got it. And I wish I had known about it sooner. I knew about like when people used to like, I just never really understood it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm like, I like the sound, but it's kind of weird to watch was like people playing with slime or phloem. A um, few years back, started to get really big on Instagram, and I was like, what is this? But when I found it more so on the TikTok world, I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. And it's also for PTSD, um, for depression, anxiety, etc. Some people love it, some people don't. Some people like certain sounds, others like, you know, you'll find what you like, and then I just search those. So if I say... Um, um, brush microphone sounds ASMR like I just type in something generic that I liked one time and then they'll do like hours of it if you like the sound of the keyboard like people typing on a keyboard um, like I just love the little clickety clacks or people tapping on things like this and the way it sounds through the mic is so different than in person and someone's doing it for you. So it's almost like when you want someone to scratch your back, but they want you to scratch their back and you're like, who's going to scratch my back? This, these people are doing that for you. Um, some people have the, I always forget the name of it. Marie always remembers the name. It's the ones with the, 
the bowls and they do like the the water and then drag it around the bowl and it makes that beautiful sounds but yes it is so addictive and that's like all i follow so my lives are only asmr people because all i do is follow asmr videos um so i'm just like oh my gosh this person's doing like this one girl on youtube i don't remember which what it was and i hope i find it again but she put on those like long nails that come out to here where you just slide them on your finger and then your nails are like long and she's just doing this into like faux fur and the way the mic sounds i'm like oh my gosh it was like someone was massaging my scalp and i was all whatever this is I need this every night when I'm falling asleep. So I put in my little headphones so that Greg doesn't get disturbed and I just listen to it and I'm in love with it. And I'm like, these people are brilliant. They're being so nice with their time. Yes, you can tip them when you're on uh, TikTok or you can just you know, you can just listen. They're not expecting it, which is so nice. They're not like, please tip me. You can't be here unless you're tipping me. They don't know who's watching, who's not, so they don't say anything, but I do tip when I'm like, no, they're they're giving it their all. One girl's on for seven hours a day as her job. So it's good to mask the ringing. Yes, um, my grandfather just got tinnitus recently from hitting his head really hard, and he says it just sounds like bees are in his head, um, especially when he lays down. So he's been struggling with that. And um, yeah, it might. You, you should let me know if that kind of works out for you. But we just found out it was tinnitus um, later last year because he thought there were bees in his house. Poor thing. He's 91. I'm like, he doesn't know. He didn't know. Poor baby. And you wake up an hour later, yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, when did I fall asleep? Seriously, I've never, ever, ever done that. Have you tried brown noise? No, I haven't ever done that. I've done white noise, but not brown noise. Um, interesting. What What is that one more so? Brown noise. I know what white noise is, but I don't know what brown noise is. Okay, so here we go. It's like white noise, but lower pitch, I believe. There's a science to it, so I'm not sure. Interesting. Here's what I can tell you, okay? Is that I can tell you, not, I'm no scientist, I can tell you that I am more heightened with my sense of sound now than I was before listening to ASMR. And I've noticed it more when I go to sleep to it the next morning, like something will just kind of like, and I'm like, what? What's that? It's almost like an, a natural drug addiction, right? And, and I'm not talking about drugs. I'm talking about like an addiction to needing to hear it. It's so weird. It's like, it's like when you say, I'm high off of life and I don't mean the cereal. Like you're just enjoying yourself and it feels so good. That's the best way I can describe it. And I regret nothing. I wish I could listen to ASMR all day, but it does put me in a zone and a trance. So I have to mostly do it at night or when I'm just trying to relax. Um, but yeah, I haven't tried it for sleeping, but it helps when I have to focus on boring paperwork. Okay, so that's good to know, Maudie, because if it doesn't put you to sleep, um, if it doesn't put you to sleep, then I would love it for focus. I actually am trying, and again, I know falling into TikTok um, trends is not great. Okay, but this one I was like advertised to, and I've tried one other one, and I wasn't as big on it because it was still coffee. This one is that Mud Water, M-U-D, and then W-T-R. I don't know if anyone's tried it. Let me know if you have. Um, I ordered it. It also comes with a little... Um, what do you call it? Like a frother, which I've been looking for. I was meaning to get a frother. So to get the whole kit to start, it comes with a frother. And I'm like, even if it doesn't work, it's okay. It's an all natural thing to switch out from coffee and people with coffee addiction like me, they can switch over to this mud water. And it's apparently like all natural, all great, gives you the same benefits, no jitters, no crash, no, you know, whatever. Because I'm like becoming a moon. Um, a moon. <laughs> I'm becoming a moon. I'm becoming immune 
to coffee. Like I just, it does nothing for me. Soda, it doesn't make me hyper. I'm already hyper naturally. So I have been looking for something to switch to. Um, you want to order it as well? Yeah. My issue with sleeping is having, hold on, is having, my issue with sleeping is having sleep para oh, paralysis. I read about that. So me, I don't have sleep paralysis, which I'm so sorry that happens to you. Um, I learned about that about like eight years ago. Um, a friend told me about it and then I researched a lot of it and was like, oh my gosh, that's terrifying, you poor things. Seriously, I feel so bad for you. Um, I sleepwalk when I'm really, really tired. Like I have had a day traveling and doing crazy stuff, I'll sleepwalk. Um, the worst one was the Universal Studios when I was in eighth grade. We stayed in a hotel and I had dreams about Universal Studios. I ended up in a closet at, in our hotel. I ended up walking into the counter like 800 times thinking a man was mad behind me that he wanted me to move faster. So like I've dealt with that, but I fall asleep with my arms going completely numb. Not like sleep paralysis, like when you get the tingles when as soon as you move. So I cut the circulation off of my arms by wrapping myself, unfortunately, in blankets too tight. Or I lay on my arms the wrong way and it happens so often, at least two times a week, I wake up thinking my arms need to be cut off. Like, it's really bad, but not sleep paralysis. That is a whole nother thing that I've never dealt with and I hope I never have to, so I'm so sorry. Um, but the out of body experiences, yeah. Look it up, sleep paralysis is so scary. Like they wake up and they're mentally awake, but their body physically hasn't woken up yet. So they feel like they can't move. It's really scary. Really, really, really scary. And I've never done it and I am terrified of it. I'm like, please don't ever let me wake up like that. Um, and then again, the out of body experience part of it. Um, but for me, mine is that I'm always laying on an arm weird and then waking up and then I start freaking out and thinking I have to uh, my arm has to be cut off or, you know, I'm going to lose my drawing arm. I mean, I've had full on like tears. My arm, I can't feel it. And I'm like, you know, Greg's like, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. And I'm like, the other one is I see things so well that I think I've been up for like five minutes and I've seen a spider coming down from the ceiling or crawling across the blankets. Like I see it so clearly along with the room that I have to explain to Greg. Greg and Greg and I should really do a talk about that because he can't stand it. And I wake up and I'm like so angry and I'm like, oh, there's this big spider in our bed. And he's like, even I'm like, I've been awake for like 10 minutes, Greg. I've been watching it. And he's like, no, you've been asleep. I've been awake watching TikTok or like doing something. You've been asleep. I'm telling you, you just opened your eyes and started screaming and it's almost like sleep paralysis where I can see my room. I can see everything. I can feel my body though. And then like, but I can see things. I've had full bees in my room covering my entire room, my floor. I couldn't get off the bed. I've had the one where like um, uh, the hive is hanging in front of the door and I can see it really clearly. And my door was shut and I was screaming for my mom. But then I was so afraid for her to open the door that I kept telling her not to open the door. Um, so like my mom can tell you stories of that. It's just, I'm very, I'm a very vivid dreamer and I remember a ton of my dreams and I feel like I never sleep. I feel like I go into another world. So yeah, um, I talked a lot so you guys could chitty chat for a little while. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry to Myra. That's awful. I get the numbness in my arms too, worse since my neck surgery. And that's when it started getting worse for me. Lisa was when I got my car accident, um, my really bad like head on one. And then after that one was when the lady ran me off the road a few years ago and, um, and my, I had a total loss for my car. She spun me and I hit everything so sideways. It ended up kinking my right side of my neck to my arm. So my arm aches if I paint too long, just naturally. I mean, you know, you're not supposed to be like this all day. But um, it actually gets worse to where I have pinched nerves. So um, it's been getting worse sleeping. I feel like my whole arms just go completely numb. I just this year started getting the numb arms thing. Not every night, but it's happening. Yep, same, same. You ever dream you're already awake and dressed and ready for the day and then the alarm goes off? Yeah, I've had that one before. I have had that one before where like 
I've, I'm like ready for my whole day. And then you're like, wait, what just happened? There was one where I had, I will never forget. I had a Game Boy and this is when Game Boys were in, okay? Don't judge me. <laughs> and I had a Game Boy and I was so excited. I'm like, our family couldn't afford things like that. I mean, it took a really long time for my brother to get the Sega, whatever the handheld one was that Sega came out with. It took like a year or so after they came out for him to get one. Um, but I wanted a Game Boy so bad. I dreamt I had it. I dreamt I was sitting on my bed and it was like that day. And when I woke up, I was like, wait, what? No, where's my, where's my Game Boy? And I start looking for it everywhere. And my mom's like, no, you're going to be late. Like, let's go. Let's get down to breakfast. I'm like, but I'm looking for my Game Boy. And she's like, you don't have a Game Boy. Yeah. The Game Gear. Exactly. I knew Madi would know that. And, um, and I was so committed to finding this Game Boy. That's how real my dream was. It wasn't just like, oh, oh, it was a dream. You're right. No, I was like, no, this happened. I told my mom I've seen dinosaurs before at a zoo. And I still remember this quote unquote dream. I thought until I was about a sophomore in high school that dinosaurs were a real thing. Even though everyone said they were extinct, I thought somehow they were still at zoos. Okay, and this sounds crazy, but I promise you, it's true story, okay? I have no, no shame in saying this. I dreamt my grandmother took me to a zoo and I saw triceratops and a brontosaurus, okay? They were just, we were way up above and looking down over at them. And I woke up and like, I don't know, to me, it really did happen. We really went to the zoo because my grandma's taken me to a zoo before. And it never happened. <laughs> there are no dinosaurs. But yet, for, until I was a sophomore, I thought I really went and I really saw them. That's how real my dream was. <laughs> no, we never got a Game Boy. I think by the time the Game Gear came out, like Game Boys weren't cool anymore. But I had wanted a Game Boy like when you know, when they were all the rage and all our friends had them. And of course our parents were like, we don't have that kind of money. You don't need it. You already have a Nintendo, you know? So we had the Nintendo, but all our friends had the other, um, we never got anything but a Nintendo. My stepdad had an Atari. So we kind of just had that when we moved in with him. Um, but as for, like getting any kind of other gaming device we never did. And then by the time my brother graduated high school, he wasn't into it and I wasn't into it because my brother wasn't into it. And so there was that. Um, I actually got up and got dressed to go to work and then realized it was Saturday for real, not a dream. That I've had happen too. Growing up, my sisters would sleep in bunk beds and they both would sleep talk and they would talk to each other. It was hilarious. That is so cute. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm gonna finish and make this my stopping point right here. Okay, yeah, we'll pick up tomorrow on Instagram. I'll probably do it before my friend's come over, friend comes over. Um, so I'll probably do it in the earlier morning, but I've really enjoyed talking with you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me company. Um, I know that if anyone watches this later, it's more exciting when you're in the chat and then later they're gonna be like, what are they talking about? How did they even get on this? You know, so I try to read what you guys are writing. Um, but I will share my last one with you guys. Okay, so there was this one. So I was in high school. If you've heard this, I'm sorry, you can leave early. Your excuse from the class. Um, so I didn't know what a double shift was and I was in high school and I was working, I started my first job when I was 14, um, working part-time on top of school and I worked at a coffee shop and we would do barbecue nights during the summer so our patio would be the, all the barbecue stuff. And um, and I went, I went home that night and my mom knows, I used to walk around serving coffee to people when I would sleepwalk because I was so tired from school and a job because I had to pay for my own stuff. My mom was like, if you want a pager, you've got to pay for it. You want a car, you're going to have to help me pay for it because she was like single mom, you know? And um, so I'm glad I did because I learned a lot of work ethic very young. And then... Um, I'd walk around and I'd like serve people. I'm like decaf regular. And she said, my eyes would be closed. But like I knew where I was in the room. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I had the map of the room. I was in my bedroom, but serving people. I could see them in my room. And, um, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm in my pajamas. I'm so sorry. You know, like it was so weird. 
And then um, I had a dream that I worked in the morning and then I worked again at night. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had this dream. I worked in the morning and worked at night. Man, that was exhausting. This is like what I'm telling you is I feel like I never sleep. I go into the next world, like it's some dream world and then I come back. So I'm usually restless when I wake up because I just don't sleep, sleep. I always dream, always dream, clearly. I've got an active imagination here. So the next day, my boss is like, okay, Eva, we're gonna do this with you since you're like 15. We can't work you crazy, but we can do a double shift if we plan it correctly. And I'm like, what's a double shift? And they're like, well, you're gonna work in the morning for just you know like three hours right now, and then we're gonna send you home. And then you're gonna come back for the barbecue at night because we're shy um, one of the hostesses. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, no worries. I go home and I'm like, wait a minute, this was my dream. I worked a double shift. So my mom's had premonitions and she's not even one of those people. It's like, I believe in mediums and that. She thinks there's things, but she isn't, she's not like into that, into that. So she, my mom's had premonitions, like our horse's leg got cut off. But then when she went outside the next morning, um, the leg was like all wrapped in barbed wire. And so they needed to call someone that almost had to amputate it, but they saved the leg. So like there has been weird things and I have them from time to time when it's something like really big or sometimes just really weird. And that was my first like real premonition I've ever had. So yeah, um, do I draw and thank you. I see what you guys are writing. I'm gonna go back to it. Do you draw what you dream ever? Yes, um, there are times I will do something incredible, like a crazy illustration, and I, as soon as I wake up, I'm like, shh, shh. because you know when you start drawing it, and it, the way I picture it in my head is I see in pictures, so it was like as you're thinking of a dream, it starts to just pull away and disappear, so that's why I always picture is like the drawing is just sim like flying away as I'm trying to like, no, no, hold on, I'm still drawing you, you know, or you have a dream and you're like, oh, don't forget that in the morning, you know, don't forget because it's like two in the morning when I remembered it and I don't want to forget. Um, so that's a great question, Maddie. I had two sleep studies for sleep apnea and I had uh, no REM sleep at all. Uh, I had no REM sleep at all both times. Um, my ex-husband, he, uh, he was awful. I mean, like, awful and luckily he got the whole surgery done and everything but it was because of me like saying i don't sleep because you don't sleep like i'm never asleep we had to sleep in separate rooms because it was so awful and he just didn't want to wear the like mask thing but i'm kind of proud of myself i i pushed him i was like ultimatum you don't sleep in the same room as me until you get this fixed and it was really bad and we were together for 13 years so it was a lot of dealing with like somebody waking up and jolting in the middle of the night and then like the whole bed would move and then I'd be like, <gasps> you know, constantly. Um, but then when he went in for the thing, they said, you have rapid eye movement the entire night. You've never fallen asleep, not once in eight hours. So same Lisa, like I've lived with those people that are that person before I should say that, um, it, that's no joke, that's very serious. And I know it causes a lot of health issues and all of that. So um, yeah, it took him going and them saying he had a, a deviated septum that was so bad and his tonsils were touching in the back, which we always knew, but no one ever took his tonsils out. So when he'd sleep on his back, it was just awful. There was no air for things to get through. And that football player, I think what scared me was there was a NFL player who ended up passing away because he wasn't getting enough oxygen to his brain. And that's when I was like, this is no joke. You're getting it fixed or like, we don't sleep in the same room ever. And he was like, okay, I'll do it. So, um, so I was really glad he did it because it really helped him in life. So hopefully you find out now that can work. And I'm so sorry, the rapid eye movement thing is crazy. Um, the mask is awful. Yep, seven to eight times a night. I am so sorry. I just remember he would go, I think the longest he didn't take a breath was 20 seconds. I laid there with my hand like on his back waiting for him to go, <gasps> you know, it's so scary. Um, so I'm sending you lots of love and hoping, did they not offer you a surgery to try? Um, because he ended up having to get the tonsils removed and an airway passage broken down so that he could breathe better. So I didn't know. Bye time troopers, as we're talking about all this sad stuff. Um, Thank you to all you guys for leaving all these kind comments. 
Can I get the same commission? <laughs> that is one thing I don't do. I don't do identical commissions, but that's why I make prints, so you get something close. But um, yeah, thank you, Jazz. Um, thank you, Myra. Thank you, Time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Myra. Thank you. Thanks, Maudie. Thanks to everyone. Roro was on here earlier. Thank you, thank you. Mwah. If I didn't say your name and you jumped on, thank you, thank you. Um, so far, memory is good. No, nope, the tonsils removed at 42. Wow. Well, I'm just so sorry that you guys have to go through that struggle. And um, yeah, it's sleep is such a hard thing. I have a, um, a sleep number bed. It was the first thing I uh, purchased when I became a single lady. And I was like, a sleep number bed will change my life because I never can sleep on the same bed for very long. And um, it really has helped, but I'm slowly having issues with that bed. And I'm like, when will I find a bed and a pillow that work for my neck and my back? Because I'm just not sleeping comfortably. But yeah, um, good night. I just wanted to hang out. If anyone lands on this stream later, this is who we are. We talk about life and stuff. Um, thank you so much, Monty. And thanks for helping me find the shoe thing. I'm so glad that we found that. All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful night. I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. My cats are pacing because I'm up still. So once I get settled, then they go to sleep. Um, I thought I heard something. Greg should be home soon. So um, I'm going to go watch The Rookie because Nathan Fillion, he my man. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. <laughs> Sorry, Greg, but he my man. Um, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow on Instagram. I'll post when I think I'm going to do it in my stories. Um, but like I said, about one, I have plans. And then um, I'll try to live stream on different places as I go. But this is my last big commission right now. And then I'm going to do some digital so I can get away from paints. And then I'm going to come back to paints. But um, tomorrow night... I want to say tomorrow afternoon or night, I will be on TikTok doing an ASMR art session. That just means I play music in the back room softly because I can play it there. I um, am going to create another florettal, a large one for Bob Baker Marionette. And please note that I do have plans to make more squash florettals. Um, excuse me. I burped. <laughs> Rude. This is what happens when you're live. Um, she is a real person. So I'm going to do that and you just kind of listen to the sounds and me messing with the markers and stuff like that. So that's it. Yes, the rookie, yes. All right, you guys have a wonderful, beautiful night. Say good things. Thank you, Jazz. Um, say positive affirmations, good things you want to happen. You'd be surprised. The way you change your mind is how you can change your day. And um, it's pretty exciting when things I say like come into fruition, maybe not in the exact way I'm hoping, but somehow, and I'm like, why am I not doing affirmations every day? <laughs> so just trying to change my mind. And yes, wine and cheese. I just had a little bit more of my wine after my little gallery. So, but um, this is what I got from the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> they sent me the little one that didn't sell and they knew I love gnomes. So they gave me the whole gnome basket. <laughs> So I've been putting my little wine in there. But yeah, um, thank you so much. Bye, you guys. Mwah. Astrid and Sore. Th sore. <laughs>